Welcome back to yet another video, and we're gonna finally do my long over February wrap up. Do books are falling everywhere, so that's a thing. All right, so the first well, wasn't the first book I read, but we're gonna talk about the book that I ended up giving a one star to, which I hardly ever do that for a book but for some reason I wasn't connected with the characters in this one I didn't really understand a whole lot what they were talking about but I ended up DNFing this at 16% and that is Lady Hot Superior by Tessa Gratton like like I said I tried to get into this book I have the audiobook version, so I don't own the physical copy of it, which I'm glad I don't because, like I said, I ended up giving it one star. The only things that I really caught were Queens of Innis Lear, which I think is the, maybe the first book to this, but I can't even give you a description on what it's about. The only thing that I caught was a few names like Banana... Amora, but I really did not care about it at all. And again, that's another reason why I gave it one star, so there's definitely that. So we're going to move on to the other books that I did like and I did enjoy, so let's jump into it, shall we? Okay. This one I'm super excited about because I'm buddy reading this with someone over on Twitter. If I can remember her Twitter handle, I will try to leave it down below. And you know who I'm talking about if she's watching this. I don't know if she will be, but hi, hello, how are you? <laughs> Alright, so we buddy read Red Rising by Pierce Brown. To me, this is the second time rereading it. And I loved it even more than I did the first time because we're following Darrow and his story. It's kind of like the Hunger Games, but hear me out, in like outer space because they're in space. And you got your high colors, you got your middle colors, you got like secondary middle color and then like you got the really low low colors and our friend Darrow is the one of the low red colors like I know it's weird to explain but like th there's these gold colors who are supposed to be like our protectors and like our people that will go to war and like make sure everything is all good and whatnot but in this case like I said, Darrow is a low color and he started off red, but then his wife, this is kind of like a spoiler if you haven't read Red, Red, Red Rising, skip to the next book, but if you read Red Rising, you know exactly what I'm talking about, because poor Darrow, oh, his wife gets killed in the very beginning and it says that on the back a little bit that his wife has been taken so I mean I guess that's a given but it it tears me apart okay and then like after he loses his wife he was supposed to die and he didn't die but he got made into a gold because he wants to go and take down his enemies who took his wife from him and then along the way, Darrow meets new friends, and he gets thrown into this game kind of like the Hunger Games. You basically have to fight for survival, and only a certain amount of people make it out. And if you make it out, it's like you win the World Cup kind of thing. At least that's how I'm looking at it. Probably all wrong, but we're going with that description because I like it. But Red Rising is so good. Uh, 
I'll hopefully be getting the, to reread again Golden Sun and the Morning Star and then read slash finish Iron Gold this year because mm, your girl really needs to finish the series. But moving on from Red Rising, never want to, but that just means I can reread it again and again and again. Okay. <laughs> The next book that I did finish is Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. This is the third and final book in the Infernal Devices. And this one is following Miss Tessa Gray as she's still trying to decide. She's engaged to Jem in this one. They talk about how they're going to get married and then he gets sick and then she gets taken away and then there's Will who's still like in love with her and it's just it's all over the place but it's kind of like a trashy good all over the place if you get what I mean and if you read this you definitely know what I mean it's like you're either a team Jem or B team Will or team C both at first I wasn't sure how I would like Tessa with Will but at the end, you know, I liked it. He was sweet to her, so I will give Will Herondale props to being sweet to Miss Tessa Gray, the shape shifter downworlder that the world hasn't really seen yet. And um, the fact that it's in London that makes me want to go visit London one day because it just it sounds really cool, and I've never really been there. But, getting ahead of myself. My bad, I, I do that a lot. Like I said, it's following, like, Jem and Tessa and Will and their whole love triangle thing. And then, like I said, Jem gets sick, Tessa Gray gets taken away by the bad guy that we met in the very first book in Clockwork Angel. Oh, I hated that man with a passion so much that I can't even remember the dude's name. We'll just leave it at that. And he is the one who originally wanted to marry Tessa and Tessa's like, I'm marrying you. I'd rather marry Jen than marry you. Or in this case, Will. But you know what I mean. But anyway, it was just a roller coaster of ride and I really enjoyed Tessa Gray as a character. I liked all the characters in here. Except for maybe Jessica. I mean, she was okay towards the end and it just uh, that's all I gotta say about that character but overall I really do like the Infernal Devices series and it's definitely a series I will eventually one day reread but yes and this is a huge one or at least I think it is but definitely worth it alright and then I have another Cassandra Clare book that I read this month, and it's another big, huge one. How I managed to get those two books done, audio, very big help. And that is The Tales of the Shadowhunter Academy by Cassandra Clare, and a couple of other authors as well. And this one is just of Simon's point of view and a few other characters from like the Fernal Devices. Some of the characters are in this one which I absolutely loved so I would recommend reading the Infernal Devices first before you get to this one because like I said there are some characters from that world in this world. Not a whole lot but I did like the parts of reading about Tessa's and Will's kid James that they named after Jam, which was precious and sweet and I loved it. There's a couple of stories of him in here and then there's Simon who's trying to figure out who he was when he before he got his memory wiped away and then it goes back and forth between him and Izzy and Clary and Chase and Alec and Magnus and all the other characters that we learn to love and grow with the Shadow Hunter world and universe and just 
I really liked it a lot. And it took me maybe with the audiobook like about maybe a little over a week to read this big bad boy. And when you're really into it, you're into it. And <laughs> Nerdy Simon does not disappoint anyone. Except for maybe Izzy at, at times, but it did not disappoint this girl here. Hmm. Okay, Simon. We're moving on from you. Sorry. But uh, sorry. <laughs> Alright, so the other book I did manage to get on audio so I could finally finish it is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kwan, which I'm glad I finally finished because the third book is coming out this year sometime soon. I know I have the release date, but I... We're just going to talk about The Dragon Republic, okay? Because we thought a lot of stuff went down in the first one. Hmm, no, there's a lot more stuff that went down in the second one. And then Neza, I'm pretty sure that's how you say his name. They said it kind of weird on the audio, so we're going with Neza. He treats Ren as he would treat any other friend, which is poor bad, not the best at decision making, and really, really stupid at times. And then we got our cat oh, I love him, his snarkiness, his, his sarcasm, and he's like, I do it, you do it kind of thing. And the relationship between him and Ren, I love it. She wants to be there for him, and he wants to be there for her as much as possible, and like toward the end, when they had to connect together so she can call upon her phonix dragon, like, uh, you sure you really want to handle the power of having a god in your head telling you to burn stuff? I mean, I know I probably wouldn't want to do that, but... And then she had to come off of like being high and then try to call her dragon lord down so she could bring up the fire. But there was times where it disappeared for a little while and she had to go and try to figure a way to bring it back. And then Nessa's dad tried to help and then it was a mess. <laughs> I'll tell you that it was a hot mess, but it was like a good hot mess. and. Throughout the second one of this one, she kept going back, well, I'm not Alton, I'll never be Alton, and he did it this way, yeah, I get that, but I'm not him. I'll never be him. I liked that part of the book, but at the same time, she gave herself hell about Alton and how the way things ended there, and thinking how it should have been her and not him, but, ugh. Oh, this poor child goes through a lot and they're on top of another war when they just came out of a war and so they're constantly on the move they're constantly fighting and Ren's got her group of ragtag friends that you meet at the very end of the first book they come in this one and oh, Ramsey <laughs> are happy to old you anyway <laughs> Oh, and the middle that just broke me. I'm like, what? no, just I'm not over that. It still blows my mind how they did that character, and it was just like, are you stupid? Yeah, must be, cause you're stupid. <laughs> but overall, he was a really good character, and I liked him. And I was just like, no. <gasps> Anyway, overall, I really did enjoy the Dragon Republic, and now I'm just on this massive cliffhanger until the third book comes out. I think it's not out until like August or something, but um, can I have it now? I want it now. I really want it. <laughs> Alright, and then another book that I did finish was a big one as well. This month was quite a few big books and I'm complaining about how I didn't read enough. Um, I read a couple of 
big books. And the next one we're going to get through is Layer of Dreams by Liv Bray. This is the second book to the Diviner series. And oh goodness, this one was also another full of adventure and mystery and leave you on the edge of the seat like what gonna happen with these people we don't know but I want to say Evie is definitely one of my favorite characters absolutely or something like that she says a lot it's just her language and then like between her and Sam and Jericho there's another little love triangle there it's like she wasn't really all that fond into Sam but since Evie got really popular with her radio show and her telling the world that she's the, a diviner when she probably should have kept it a secret but that's just me but anyway it was really good and then you got to see more of Sam's point of view a little bit of Jericho's point of view, which I like that. And then some of Maribel's a little bit of point of view between her and Jericho. She kind of liked how they were to get together, but he didn't really like her. He was more into Evie than her best friend. Oops. Uh, <laughs> and then you got Memphis, who likes... Oh, what's a name? What's a name? Who hangs out with Henry? Um, and I like the point of view of Henry. And then I like Ling. And then like their whole like tree walking thing. Like that was... That was actually kind of cool because I kind of visualized the dream world as I was listening to it on audio. And that, okay, that was the other girl that I liked. Okay, we'll get back to that. But, uh, <laughs> I kind of like the whole dream walking thing. Like, it kind of reminded me of one of an older movies that has Leonardo DiCaprio in it. I can't think of the, the name of that movie, but you might know what it is. Because they're like in this like dream landscape and only he can see the certain person and like no one else can kind of way that's what this kind of reminded me of and I kind of liked that but it's also kind of creepy because after you go into your dream land and then they say promise you'll stay with us and and they're like yeah I promise dream with us dream 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 with us that was creepy as shit <laughs> excuse my French but it was I was just like oh my god it's like I'm watching a scary movie but it's like a kid scary movie but I'm like oh what's gonna happen I'm, a, I'm terrified but it was a good kind of terrified and I love the series I don't know why it took me so long to start it but I can't wait to move on in the Diviner series when I get into book three and I finally got book four so exciting things happening <laughs> moving on I don't know what that was but we're moving on. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to talk about this reread. Like I've mentioned before when I reread the first one, I haven't read some of these books since high school, but I'm not going to go into full detail about it because they've been around for a while. I'm just rereading the series this year just because I haven't in a really long time, like my high school days, but anyway. I listened to Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling and as far as we know this is Harry's second year at Hogwarts and a lot of mysterious things are gonna go down and there's this monster creature that only Harry can hear going through the walls but they don't know it's through the walls and then Harry, Ron, and Hermione do this little drink potion so they can find out what's in this chamber thing from Draco. They didn't get a whole lot of information, but they got a little bit. But and then they have this dark against the art teacher. I'm probably saying that wrong. But anyway, that teacher 
Lockhart. I remember when we read this in middle school that I didn't like it very much. And as I reread the character and rewatched the movie not that long ago, my statement with that still stands. Still can't stand the dude. He claims he's done a lot of things, but then when that situation came up, he's like, oh yeah, I've dealt with that. I can go ahead and do it. He chickens out like you didn't do it. You stupid. <laughs> what you want. Uh, the third book, I know there's another teacher in there that's a little cuckoo. Like, where do they find these dark teachers? <laughs> dark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but overall, it's like, I kind of like the world, but like, I'm not like obsessed about Harry Potter, if that makes sense. So there's, there's that. We're moving on from Harry Potter. Mm, okay. And then, okay, yeah, <laughs> this is the last and final book that I read this month, which is uh, Broken Things by Lauren Oliver. Um, listen, this one, it was like a mystery from the two best friends that used to be best friends back when they were younger, and they had a third best friend, but she died when they were like really little and the town thought the older or the two best friends were the ones that had murdered this little girl and they didn't but as they grow older they connect back together again because they want to try to poke at to see who actually went and killed this little girl and then they have another friend that was in the mix with it and they thought maybe he had killed her because that's what they accused but it's just the whole mystery of trying to figure out who went and killed their friend and was it this girl's foster dad that didn't really care too much about her or was it something beyond that something sinister that she didn't really tell the two friends that what was really going on with it so basically that's the whole story of this of the two ex-best friends trying to figure out what happened to their middle best friend that died when they were really little because they were young and sometimes you don't tend to remember stuff when you were younger but yeah they had to come together to try to figure out that and that's basically all that happened and then when you finally find out who did kill the little girl that was the part that you would not expect that was like okay I get that I see that I guess I didn't see it coming it was creepy at that part when they finally figured out who did it and then they got their names cleared but that part was all good but yeah other than that I don't know it was like a, a, a four star for me so um bye bye we're getting rid of it now but all right there you guys have it those were my eight books that i got done in february if you're new here go ahead and hit the subscription and hit the notification bell if you like to see more videos for me for when i post which i try to do frequently and yeah, that's all I have for you today guys alright I hope you guys are having a good day or night and of course get some reading in there because why not and I will see you all in a new video soon okay okay bye